सो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू गेट टू बाई प्लेटफॉर्म सो लाइक दिस इज अ सेकेंड वीडियो विच आई एम बींग असिस्टेंट ऑन इन द वीक फॉर अपलोडिंग ऑन ओके सो लाइक इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी आर स्टार्टेड विद दी आर्टर्स आई हैव गिवन अर जस्ट बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन डेट हाउ टू स्टार्ट विद आर्टर्स हाउ टू स्टार्ट विद फ्री आर्टर्स वॉट आर डिफरेंट कॉम्पोनेंट इन फ्री आर्टर्स लाइक ऑफ फ्री आर्टर्स कर्नल फ्री आर्टर्स कोर लाइब्रेरीज एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स free artos for the aws and then we have come to an conclusion that important thing in artos to understand and to start with so free artos kernel and in the kernel again there are many things and we will be mainly focusing on the task management and task creation part okay so like how to create the task and how to how to schedule different task in a free artos so in this video is going to be on that only i'm going to implement a uh, different two card we will be creating two task on free artos using stm32 controllers and stm32 cube id and then make them run parallelly so, uh, so that it appears that both of them are running at a time but that is not would be the actual situation okay so like like uh, let's start the video with this topic So guys, before going further, there is just a small thing that uh, I need to tell you about a uh, CMSIS Artos. So CMSIS stands for the Cortex Microcontroller Standards, uh, Cortex Microcontroller Software Interface Standard. Here, uh, so like uh, the our Cortex Microcontrollers are being uh, produced, being uh, developed by the ARM. So ARM provides a standard interface for. Uh, Wrapper in a in a form of wrapper APIs to use the Cortex processor peripherals like that of NVIC, MPU, system debug, and all those things. So like our Cortex processors has also some peripherals in it, like analogous to peripherals. So to use those things to those hardware IPs, ARM provide a standard software APIs so that we can directly use those AP or uh, the hardware IPs. Functionality is just like a R. My STM32 controller is HAL, so CMSIS is a HAL for Cortex microprocessors. So CS CMSIS not only provide peri wrapper APIs for peripherals, but it also provide wrapper APIs for using the middlewares on Cortex-based microcontrollers. Like Artos is one of the such middleware we are using on the Cortex-based microcontrollers. So like, uh, what does it mean? That let's say we are using free autos. Now, so if there are some functions in free autos to create a task, then CMSIS autos will provide a wrapper API that is named as the OS thread create that will create task. Internally, this function will be using the function of free autos that will create a task that is X task X task create. Now, say if user is working with the embed autos, different autos. And there are some function embed autos to create a task like free autos as x task create function embed autos must be having some also function to create a task so cmsis autos using the cms uh, csi autos it will provide the same wrapper api to the application developer that is the os thread create that is in this case also but in this case this os thread create internally will be using the Uh, API of the embed autos. Okay, so now like you see that for the application developer, he doesn't want to change the application code much. And the wrapper API is OS thread create. You know, in case of free autos and in case of embed autos, remain same. This internal working is changed automatically by the use of CMSIS autos. So CMSIS auto supports number of autos. Like free autos, RTX, embed, you know, uh, ThreadX, and all those things. But 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 there is one thing that, uh, however, CMSIS autos APIs are not recommended to use when we are developing it. Why so? Because it adds an extra HL, extra hardware section layer to our software. 
and also says CMS and Artos just provide the wrapper APIs. So there are many limitations, many limitations in terms of features or in terms of functionalities that we can actually use of an Artos, but because of the CMS and Artos APIs, we can't use it. So like uh, I hope you get to know about this thing, but uh, STM32 Cube ID by default makes the code in using the CMSIS Artos uh, APIs only. Okay, so it is not just loading. Yeah, okay. So like you can see that the when we create, like we, I will tell you this code, but I'm just making you work through it. These are the CMSIS Artos functions. Okay, but if you see the OS thread create function, uh, you see its function definition. So it will actually be having this function which is inside our, which is the main function of our free autos task.c. Okay, so that is what I need to give a slight overview about CMS and autos. Now let's start create a new project in STM32 for CMS. Okay, so now it is loaded and we are using stm 2 f103 okay and cv so that is what i am going to select it okay and then i am going to name my project as gb free autos first microcontroller stm 32 f103 free autos and then just creating a two task by when which one I'm using is in GBIO and then UART. Okay, C language executable and using the stream will do queue. Next and then finish. So yes, we want to open the editor and it is just loading. Okay, so now our now project is loaded and our stream will do queue MX configuration window is open. So at first we are just going to do the basic initialization that we need to do like RCC clock is selected, okay, clock configuration, HSE, PLL into 4, so that my 32 megahertz is being selected for all those things. Okay. And then in the system, we will select the serial wire, okay, and then in the connectivity, we are going to use two things, okay, uh, for, sorry, first only one thing, one is the UART. And I'm using UART in the UART one terminal mode or synchronous, and my speed would be 9600. Okay, so that is all. And then the GPIO pin, the onboard pin of STM32 blue pin is an onboard LED at PC13. So I would be using that as the GPIO out pin. Okay, so that's all of the configuration that needs to be done in the pin out and those things. Now we will do the configuration of the free autos. So go to the middleware and inside the free autos we will go. Now in the free autos we will first select CMSIS version 1. So now like you can see the free autos and its interface for stream 2 are only via CMSIS. So that's why I have just given a basic intro about the CMSIS in the starting of this video. But it's not necessary to use the CMSIS. We can directly use the free Artos APIs in our code. And that we are going to do once we have developed some basic understanding about the APIs. Okay. So in this, like before start, yeah. And one more thing when we are using free Artos. So it is recommended that the time-based source which we use is not of the system tick but of the microcontroller timer so we are going to use time source as timer one and in the free autos now this is like when you use the free auto so you just need to do for remember these two things the first thing which i have told that we will be time source as the timer one and in the advanced settings go to this new lib reinterment and enable this thing okay so these are the two things which are important and which we first need to do when we enable the free autos now you can see in the configuration of the free autos there are number of things mutexes events free autos heap usage user constant task and queues timers and semaphores user configurations and all those things so we'll be using all those of things and we will be going one by one in all those things 
initially we are going we are starting with the task and because starting one thing at a time starting all the things all together would make the system very confusing so at first we are going to create a task okay so we will be creating task and by default one task is always created that is the okay default task is like my default created now we are going to add one one more task so now when you click on this add so in the task there are number of configuration that to do when we are creating a new task so like task name okay so all this information will be saved in the task control block that i have told in the previous video so like what is the priority at which we need to execute the task is it low below normal normal above normal very high priority using normal priority and as i have told you each task is like a program in its own which has its own memory own system resources own variables and own things so we need to allocate that how much stack size a put our this task or how much memory uh, this task needs okay so we will be using 128 okay by default settings only now task is a program that will be executed so that program will be written inside of some function so that is the void what we mean by entry function every task will be having a entry function at which we will be writing its code that what program we need to execute when that task name is being called by the scheduler so our entry function name is the start task 02 code generation option is default okay parameters like the function which will we have and the like function can have local parameters or uh, those parameters so like um, for this video we'll be using null parameters and all those things will be remain same in the next upcoming videos i will be showing you what happens when we change the stack size we change the priority or when we change the parameters but as if now we are going to this configuration and i hope you have got an idea that how do we configure the task so now okay our new task two task are being created now we are going to generate the code for this thing so that's it for now like the video subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for new videos and share it with your friends